今日は始まりますさあはい。We will be diving into this episode right about now. So, on the menu today, my god, we were looking at the land area. Uh, Oceania, Australia, which is which, and Antarctica. Then we'll look at fast facts on Oceania, fast facts on Antarctica. Simple format, people, big brain levels. Big brains. Now let's just jump into it. Let's see what we've got here. So when we talk about Oceania, Australia, and Antarctica, what are we looking at in terms of land area? We're looking at the area from Australia, New Zealand, and the surrounding islands. All the way to the large block of ice down there in the southern area of the world, we call Antarctica. Now, the name Antarctica means opposite the Arctic. For those of you who don't know, you look at Europe, okay, Greenland. We discussed Greenland last time when we talked about North and South America, where Greenland was situated. Hope you remember. If you don't, smash the dislike button and go check out the last video. Otherwise, you will meet me in class and you will be in prison. Anyway, no worries. You、just check out the last video to check out what Greenland was. I think around the fifth to tenth minute we discussed it, something like that. I don't quite remember, but check out the previous episode. It's fun to watch. So, if we look at the area from Finland, Iceland, all the way to the, the very north area, northern area of the world, okay, you see that there's a sheet of ice that covers the area. It's called the Arctic. You might also want to check the Europe episode for details on that one. Now, when you go to the direct opposite of that direction, When you come all the way south, you move past Chile, Argentina, you just keep your boat sailing all the way south till you hit the very bottom of the world. I don't know, that's what I saw on the map. So, hey, don't blame me.、Uh, you get all the way down there, you meet a giant sheet of ice, which is just ice. It's just one large block of ice. The land is ice, everything is ice, everything is frozen. You, if you stay there without protective clothing, you will become iced. How's the conditions today? I can't hear you. So, yeah, you go all the way down there and then you meet Antarctica. Antarctica. Voila.、Uh, the UN Statistics Division refers to Australia and the surrounding oceans simply as. Oceania. So, when you go to the, the UN, stands for the United Nations, is the body in charge of global peace and security. It was formed after 1945, after the end of the Second World War, so that we wouldn't have a Third World War. Very simple. Now, when the UN is doing their work and they are looking at the region of the world we are discussing right now, they refer to Australia, New Zealand, and all those little Put rocks, or, but they are islands actually, actually. The archipelagos over there. We put all of them together and call it Oceania. But technically, as we'll see very soon, okay, so this is what we're looking at when we talk about Australia and Oceania. All, so let's take a good look here, shall we? This is a continent on its own, just so you know. This fat chunk of land here, including this, this,、uh, uh, these islands down here, so we can call this an archipelago because it's a chain of islands. Now, this over here is one continent on its own. All right, this is a continent on its own. So, this is Australia. Now, you have New Zealand, which is its brother right here, and then you have all these islands from Papua New Guinea, Micronesia, 
all the way perhaps Hawaii is included don't know that for sure fact check me on that one and all the way to Easter Island over here okay Asia take ends at East Timor which if you check out the episode on Asia we told you is the youngest country in Asia and if we didn't put it there we sure as hell put it in your notes so go read your notes read your notes big brain yeah big brain so that's what we're looking over here that's what we're looking at over here this is the area referred to by the UN Statistics Division as Oceania okay so whenever I talk about the when when I talk about Oceania think about this when I talk about Australia think about the country let's make this simple for each other over here right you got it morning Steve stop nigga so the area called Australia as a continent covers the country as we saw over here so i actually got ahead of myself on the script big brain ladies and gentlemen big brain big brain action okay so the area that area you saw that that entire chunk of land with the with the islands down there that one island and then two three rocks around it yeah that's australia okay and that area according to encyclopedia britannica which is a very respected source no i've got the source flexing no ketchup and it's a wonderful website and I encourage you guys to go there and read your eyes to hell about the stuff over there. Very interesting, very, very stimulating, mentally stimulating stuff. Not like cocaine. FBI, open up! So yeah. Now the, the remaining area you see, those islands, uh, those islands called Australia. And so if you take Australia out, okay let's take australia out the remaining areas you see these are the countries you are looking at 14 countries according to worldometers.info new zealand papua new guinea new zealand oh new zealand again jeez new zealand papua new guinea fiji solomon islands micronesia vanuatu samoa kiribati tonga marshall islands palau tuvalu Nauru. and let's see i want to i say three four five six seven eight nine ten I'm not designed for this. I want a car. Two, thirteen. There's one country missing here. So let's see: New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Fiji, Solomon Islands. So that makes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. One bad boy is missing. Or it's supposed. To, it's either one bad boy is missing, or instead of thirteen countries plus Australia being the 14th, I wrote this gibberish over here. Don't mind me, things happen. Einstein had small brain. SMALL BRAIN! <laughs> so, let's talk about Australia for a bit, okay? Now, Australia is a fantastic place. It's a, it's, 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 it's a fantastic place. Fantastic for all sorts of reasons. Wonderful and awful. As an example, in North America, they teach you in school it's important to eat healthily because you want to stay fit so you don't get sick and have a long life. And you're like, okay, yeah, I guess. But in Australia, they make it very clear. Wombats have a top speed of 40 kilometers an hour and the weak will be left behind. Now, the, Austra the Europeans discovered it in the 14th century. The British eventually inhabited it, using it as a colony for prisoners a penal colony in 1788 what happened in britain was that there were so many people and they needed to build so many prisons and there were so many criminals that they had to take some of their criminals away from britain and ship them down some place called australia now they eventually they essentially used the land of australia as one giant prison sounds about right doesn't it now, Australia makes a fantastic prison for many reasons. <laughs> oh, if I've got any of Steve, I've got any subscribers or viewers from Australia, they are going to rip me to shreds. But anyway, I'm going to say it. I don't care. I've said it. Crap down your desk, dog. What's up? What's up? Crap down your desk, dog. What's up with that? What's up? Anyway. Yeah. Mm, so Austra Australia is, is an interesting place for all sorts of reasons. They have weird creatures. They are, it can get unbearably hot. Oh, oh no, no, come on, baby. Fainting is a normal thing here. We're actually expecting someone to faint, okay? 
they have a lot of mineral resources though a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot you guys can check it out they have a lot of mineral resources there uh they have also some very spectacular i mean they have interesting stuff over there you can check out the uluru for example incredible piece of rock it's just a piece of rock you look at it and you're mesmerized and perhaps let me put it this way if you are not okay so if you don't live in those areas of australia which have which are cities and stuff you live in the rather rural areas where the jungle you are you're closer to the bush the jungle and stuff boy if you ain't fit you're gonna die so <laughs> you better check that one out so yeah it eventually became a country and then it became self-governing in 1988 when it means it became self-governing it didn't become technically independent because the queen is still their head of state just like canada just like new zealand and a ton of other countries so it still has the queen as its head of state just like the uk and other countries like canada and new zealand they don't have a president they have a prime minister so next time i come to class and i ask who is the president of australia and i get an answer Hello. Michelle, you are going to prison you're going to prison so yes uh the there were also indigenous people on the land that's people who were there before the white skin people who occupied and lived on the land before the white skin okay so when you talk about indigenous people i don't think i explained it in the other episode so I'm, i think i'm going to take some time and explain it here just for the avoidance of all doubt indigenous people are people who live originally on the land let's put it as the people that you traveled from somewhere to come to meet they were there before you so let's use your classroom as an example someone is sitting on the chair the person came at say six o'clock you came at 6 20. There's a lady behind me feeding cats! Stop feeding the cat! No! Alright, so where were we? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so there were people who, who were there. So, explain the point about indigenous people. You came at 6.20, someone came at 6 o'clock. They were sitting on the chair before you did. So, let's call the chair the land, and let's call the people sitting on it the inhabitants they are the indigenous inhabitants all right pretty simple so australia's first people according to national geographic are known as the aboriginal australians they have lived on that land for over 50,000 years when the british settlers began colonizing australia in 1788 between 750 and 1.25 million sorry i forgot the million when i was typing uh, things happen uh, aboriginal australians are estimated to have lived there but soon epidemics like our oh boy smallpox uh killed a lot of them and the british settlers then took their lands so between 1910 and 1970 the government decided that it was going to be a good idea to take little aboriginal ab ab aboriginal children from their parents put them in families of white people so that they wouldn't learn the customs and cultures of the original the aboriginal the aboriginal people jesus christ jesus christ pronunciation yeah anyway let's keep going so what happened here mm, let's put that into context for a bit okay so say you are not, you are not can and then the government decides that they're going to take you and other Akan children away from your homes and keep them with Gan families so that you never learn being Akan so you become Gan. This happened for a period of at least 60 years, according to, this, according to National Geographic. The people who were put, the children who were stolen in this case, are referred to as the stolen generation. Partic for, and it's, it's ironic, if you think about it because they were stolen from the uh, they were stolen they were taken away from their families so they belonged to their families and other people took them away so they were stolen and the children had their actual culture stolen from them oh, 
rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. So, yeah, this, this, this wasn't, this wasn't a good thing. This wasn't a good thing. Hands. Are we the baddies? <laughs> so they were put, they were put in adoptive families. They were forbidden from speaking their native language. Incredible. Imagine you are can and they forbid you from speaking Cree. What? <laughs> Their names were often changed. In 2008, uh, Australian Prime Minister Kevin Ruud uh, issued a national apology for the country's actions toward uh, Aboriginal Australians and of the stolen generation. And since then, Australia has worked to reduce social disparities between Aboriginal Australians and non-Indigenous Australians. Only in 1967 did Australians vote that federal laws would apply to Aboriginal Australians. Most Aboriginal Australians did not have full citizenship or voting rights until 1965. So imagine you live on the land, other people come, live on it, create a country and tell you, hey, you, you're not part of it, but you live here, so you're second class, deal with it. Not fantastic, not cool. Uh, not cool, man, not cool. So this is what the Aboriginal people look like. Not too, not too different from us, really. They, they don't look too different from us. These are Aboriginal people. So, now that we've had our fill of Australia, let's move over to Oceania. See the line where the sky meets the sea, it calls me, and no one knows how far it goes. Now, we're looking at 14 countries, uh, yeah, this, uh, let's take out Australia, so that, that should make 13 countries. Yes, and then we have, this is very interesting and important, particularly for monsters addicts. Listen here, dependencies or territories, think about this, oh, listen here very carefully. We are looking at small islands that have other countries protecting or providing for them, or in more blatant, brutal, uh, brutal flagrant terms, colonizing them. These territories are not countries. Bear that in mind. They are not countries. They are areas that have been colonized, pure and simple. Examples are St. Helena and her dependencies on the Cook Islands. Oh, interesting. St. Helena was the place that Napoleon was taken. Napoleon Bonaparte, the French military dictator who crowned himself emperor and terrorized. Who the hell is that called? Man, hey, you. Stop messing up my life over here. In case you come Now. Now. Good. Now. Open to the palm head. I hope I see now for the last time. Now. The. Yeah, what was I talking about? Yes, Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon Bonaparte, excellent military commander, was able to cow Europe in a matter of 10 years, had nearly the whole of Europe under his thumb, made the big mistake of fighting two wars on two sides, one in Spain and one in Russia. The one in Russia ended horribly. The one in Spain didn't do too well either. The British, together with other countries, were able to come together and defeat him. Uh, they sent him to, what do you call it, which? Which Elba, I think, yes, that was the island of Elba off the coast of Italy, to essentially be king there. He wasn't satisfied. He came back, took France, military coup style, you know, Napoleon, he's got to do it his way, and went right back to trying to colonize the whole of Europe again. Uh, when I say colonize, I use the term loosely, okay, control. Let's use the term control. But since he was doing it with an army, I mean, I go beat you, uh, you sign an agreement with me that uh, you say I'm your daddy, and when I say uncle, you say uncle. Uh, so yeah, go colonization, whatever term you prefer. Uh, at the Battle of Waterloo, the British, together with, I think, a British-Prussian coalition defeated him, and he was then exiled to the island of St. Helena, which was, I think, 4,000 kilometers away from France and an island smack in the middle of the ocean somewhere he could like you had absolutely no hope 
of escaping. He died there, and the French government eventually went, purchased the area he lived in, and it's now a memorial now to his memory. We oui. so yeah. So that does it for Oceania. We've looked at those countries. Uh, no, there's nothing to say there. So let's look at Antarctica. Do you ever see any penguins running free around New York City? Of course not. We don't belong here. It's just not natural. This is all some kind of whacked out conspiracy. We're going to the wide open spaces of Antarctica. To the wild. I got ahead of myself again, big brain action. This, the name of this continent is, the meaning of the continent's name is opposite the Arctic. It's almost entirely covered in ice. It was discovered in the year 1820. There was a race by European nations to see who would get there first. Roald Amundsen, Amundsen got to the continent proper first in 1911. No one left there before the Europeans got there. So there's no indigenous person as a human being who is an indigen of Antarctica. If you're talking about the penguins, that's a different question. I'm sure they'll have a different opinion. But anyway, so today it's used for research. Mm, let's see if we can cut the history of Antarctica in a nutshell. So many countries tried to get there first. Eventually, Royal Amundsen got there. British explorers also got there. And then many countries started planting their flags over there, including Germany at a certain point under Adolf Hitler. Yep. It dropped huge swastikas over Antarctica. Certain places in Antarctica, I think it was Queen Maud Land. Yeah. And after World War II, Zero. Uh, countries came together to decide. I'm not quite sure about this, so fact check me on this. It's not exactly precise. Well, this, this is what I quite remember from the little I read about it. Uh, countries came together and decided that they were going to use the place for research. And there was so much trust, even at that time, when the US and the Soviets were seeing eye to eye, that they were allowing each other into their stations, research stations, to see whether anything was amiss, any, any, any skull, degree was, uh, skull degree was afoot. And so, yeah. Interesting, that's Antarctica. So, this, ladies and gentlemen, is Antarctica. Look down at the bottom here, look at the bottom here. See Chile, Argentina, yes, keep sailing. Row, row, row your boat gently down the sea. And if with any luck, you get frozen too. So yes, below the South Atlantic, at the very bottom of the Earth, if you look at the map this way, you will get here. Now, all these names you see, are areas under the country, the control of various different nations. And these places that you see, these names over here, are names of research stations. So you see UK, it stands the UK, ARG is Argentina, you have Chile, you have Germany, you have even South Africa over here, interesting. You have India, you have Russia, you have Japan, you have Japan, you have Argentina, Argentina, you have the US, you have Russia, you have Australia, you have Australia, you have France. What the hell is France doing here? Anyway, so you have Scott Base, New Zealand, McMurdo, uh, the US, and yeah. Mesdames et Messieurs, bienvenue à l'Antarctique. So fast fact, Australia and Oceania. Australia alone has a population of 25.36 million plus. Uh, the largest economy is, of course, Australia. The number of countries, yes, one. Oceania, including of Australia, uh, including Australia, you have a population of 41,570,842. You have the largest economy being, again, Australia. Number of countries, 14. If you take Australia out, 13. So that explains the discrepancy at the back there. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, these are the sources. This is where we found our information, where we got our photos from. Uh, thank you very much. I will invite your questions, your suggestions, anything you'd want to drop so that we know, uh, perhaps ideas for other episodes you'd want us to cover on this channel, write down in the comment section as always. Um, yay. <laughs> I'm proud. Oh boy, P L O W E D. I am proud to have your various, say, well, what's it, uh, your contributions, your suggestions, your questions, as usual. Uh, I'm going to give some shout outs here. Uh, the likes of Juanita, you do a good job with the email game. Yeah. Uh, Vanya, too, in the comment section. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Mm, I encourage the rest of you to do the same. Of course, we'll always meet in the classroom. We can have detailed discussions there, but it's, it's, it's nice to see a bit of online action. So, we have come finally to the end of this season. Season one is officially over. Season two will be up very soon. We'll be breaking new ground, exploring new topics, and having fresh, delicious, international study fun. As always, my pleasure to bring you these episodes. Have a great time. See you on the next episode. Peace out. Au revoir. Ciao. Arrivederci.